<laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to make one of my all time favorite recipes. I'm kind of feeling like carving this week, so I'm going to make some spelt bread. I love making spelt bread. This is so easy to make. Um, this is a Dutch oven spelt bread, so you definitely need a Dutch oven, which is basically like a ceramic pot with a lid. That's all you need. And um, yeah, if you don't have spelt flour, you can use regular flour, whole wheat flour. Uh, this is not a gluten free recipe, however, I like to use spelt because it is wheat free. So it's nice and easy on my wheat allergy. Um, so yeah, but any sort of gluttonous flour is perfect for this one. So I'm gonna show you how to easily make this. We're gonna ferment it overnight for 24 hours, and then I'm gonna show you how to bake it. So first, I'm gonna show you how to mix, ferment, and then bake. So first up, we're gonna need three cups of sifted spelt flour. Um, we like to sift it because it gets out all the clumps. So now that we have our sifted flour, we're going to add about a whole packet of active dry yeast. Maybe we could cut a bigger hole in it so that it's easier to get out of the package. In 20 minutes, I'll have this out of the package. It's <laughs> fine. Alright. <laughs> Next, oh, we're gonna add some salt. So I'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half of salt. Salt is key, people. So we're gonna mix this all up. I wanna add some dried herbs to this because I love a good herby spell bread. So this is just like my mom's mix of dried herbs from her garden. But you can use anything, like parsley, basil, rosemary would be amazing. You could also use fresh herbs too. Um, we actually have a ton of fresh herbs. Should we go get some fresh herbs? Let's go get some fresh herbs. Uh, this is some rosemary. And some lemon thyme. Soaked. Okay, now that we've got our fresh herbs, I'm glad I didn't forget. <laughs> the next step is we're going to add about a teaspoon and a half of some sort of sweetness. So you could use maple syrup, you could use sugar, um, honey, whatever. We're using coconut sugar. So I'm just going to put about a teaspoon and a half of the coconut sugar in a cup and a half of room temperature water. Get it like almost dissolved, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna slowly pour it in. Okay, so we want this to be a little bit wet. We don't want it to form into a ball like if you would see like a regular pizza dough or whatever because this is gonna ferment. So the moisture is actually gonna help this ferment better and you're gonna have a better quality bread. So we're just gonna kind of flatten this down, form it into a little ball. You wanna kind of make sure that it's all like together, like so. And then we're just gonna leave it like that. We're gonna cover it, air seal it. So you could just use like a sill pat, put it over, you could put another bowl over, whatever. You just wanna seal it. And then um, you wanna leave it on your counter, not in the sun for like, 12 to 24 hours, and then I'll show you what to do after we ferment this baby. What's up everyone? Today, why am I saying what's up? We're in the same video as we were. It's been 24 hours, which means that our bread is perfectly fermented, and it's ready for us to put it in the oven. So I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees, and I have my Dutch oven inside of it preheating. The reason why I do that, Oh, it's preheated. The reason why I do that is because I want the Dutch oven to be hot when I put the bread in, so it immediately gives it that like super nice crust, which is gonna be perfect. Uh, the reason why we let this ferment is because we want the yeast to kind of do its thing, and that's why we don't use baking powder, baking soda, anything like that, eggs, nothing. Yeast is gonna do 
the work here. So I just left this like this because I wanted to show you that you don't have to use plastic wrap. I try to avoid plastic wrap at all times when I'm cooking. So I just have like a little pizza pan and then a sill pack covering this, which keeps it pretty much air sealed. So I'm gonna remove my lid, whatever you used. And we have our bread right here. So your dough should have pretty much doubled in size. And you can kind of see, like when you look on the bottom, there's like all these little air pockets. That's exactly what you're looking for. All right here. So I'm gonna grab um, my spelt flour and I'm gonna kind of just work it over on my hands. I have an apron on because this can get kind of messy. And I'm gonna kind of form it into a ball. I don't wanna knead it, but I definitely wanna form it. Perfect. So we're going to kind of form it into a ball. We don't want to overwork the dough um, because if you overwork it, then you're going to kind of flatten it and you're going to ruin all those really nice air bubbles that you made um, in the fermentation process. So then we're just going to cover some flour on the bottom right here and we're going to pop it on there and just let it sit now for like five to ten minutes while our oven preheats. Okay, so we've got our hot Dutch oven. Um, the Dutch oven is important because it increases the heat with the bread, which is gonna help the crispiness, it's gonna help it rise. This is a super important component of this specific recipe. So next is we're gonna take a piece of parchment paper and then we're gonna crumple it. This is a really good way to get parchment paper to kind of like do what you want it to do. Um, even if you're making cookie, like cookie bars or something like that, I always crumple the parchment paper and then I kind of pull it out. And this is how we're gonna get the dough to perfectly fit into the pan without having parchment paper creases. So we're gonna pop this down like that. Perfect, and that's exactly what that should look like before you put the top on. Then I'm gonna flour my hands again. I'm going to grab my dough ball and I'm going to make it into a ball like so and then I'm just going to pop it in to the bottom of my pan like that. You can grab some kitchen scissors and you can cut like a little air slots which is kind of nice for the top so we've got like this little X. Okay so we're going to put this in the oven at 450 degrees for 30 minutes with the lid on and then after 30 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off and keep it in there for 15 more minutes to get that really nice golden brown texture and color on the outside of the crust. So this is gonna go in, we're gonna set the timer and we'll check it out in 30. So our timer just went off, which means that our spell bread is good to go. So we're gonna grab it out of the oven. Be careful, use a hot glove. You can see this like really lovely like hard crust. You can see the gluten right here. This is perfect, you guys. We want to get this to our drying rack and get this out of the pan ASAP. So we want to grab our parchment paper and we're going to move it over here. The final tip with this recipe is to let it cool. Um, so cooling is going to really help the bread kind of just like settle. It's going to help the outside get really crispy. So you don't want to prematurely cut into this. Yeah, you still want to cut into it when it's warm. Um, but I really like to let this guy cool. So other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for making some bread with me. And I hope you really like this recipe. I hope you try it. If you do, tag me over on Instagram at uh, chef underscore bay. And if you like this video, please leave us a comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.